guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher and welcome to day eight of the 12 days of Flipmas. Today we've got a Lane Cedar chest makeover. found this on a Facebook marketplace for $35, which I thought was a pretty great deal considering it's a lane and it's a pretty popular piece of furniture. But when we got there, I was like, this is why it's $35. It's pretty small, but went ahead and picked it up anyway because I wanna try out some new techniques um, with furniture that I've never really tried before. Well, one of them I've tried before on dressers and things like that, and then the other one I've never tried before on furniture per se. So we're gonna do a little bit of experimenting and I'm excited to bring you guys along. Of course though, we've gotta get the prep done, let's clean. I am gonna just use some white lightning that I've already got mixed up here in my spray bottle. And as you can see, this piece is not clean. It's very dusty and probably also has some oils and grease on it, which is what we wanna completely eliminate so that that paint can adhere. And also I'm doing this before I sand so that I don't grind it down into the wood surface. I'm also gonna go ahead and rinse off all of that cleaner so there's no left behind residue. Okay, it's time for sanding now that all the cleaning is done. I'm gonna start on the top and I think I'm gonna try and just see what wood is underneath because it would be pretty neat to have a wood element to the finished product. So I'm gonna use a 120 grit on my surf prep sanding system and see if we can get down below the finish. All right, everything's sanded. So I went all the way down to raw wood on the top and then just scuff sanded the remainder here where I'm gonna be painting. And I'm gonna flip it on its back because I am going to be taking this base off. I think it should be pretty easy to just go ahead and screw off. There's some screws underneath here. Hopefully, hopefully it just pops off once I undo these screws. Okay, I'm just going to use a little putty knife, a scraper, and a, a hammer to kind of get underneath to sort of hammer it out because I'm pretty sure it's glued on as well since it's not just popping off. That was easier than I thought. Sweet, okay. So we're gonna set this aside. Well, this is gonna go in the trash, but the reason I wanted to take this off is because it's pretty dated with this curvature down here at the bottom. I want to add a different base. And also the base that I'm gonna add is gonna be legs and they're gonna be a bit taller and more substantial than this and a lot more modern as well. So there's also this little trim piece here and I was hoping that that would come off with the base, but it didn't. I'm debating on whether or not I wanna try and take it off. I I can't, I think it's, I don't think it's like connected necessarily, um, like the same piece as this part, cause I don't want to take that off. But I think that honestly, this right here is the veneer that's right here. If I take this piece, the trim piece off, then I feel like I'll need to take these off cause it'll just kind of end right there and I'm not so sure that I wanna do that. Plus, I'm gonna be adding some trim on the front. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. So I think, I think we're gonna leave this. I think it'll look okay. And once the legs are on and such, like if I don't like it after it's all painted, I guess I can take it off at the end. It'll cause more work, but we're gonna leave it on for now because I don't wanna start destroying anything and going too crazy with the um, dismantling of this piece. So. Let's flip it back over and get cutting on the trim and filling in some holes. All right, I am going to be filling these hardware holes here because I don't want to attach any hardware. There's no drawers, so figure it's kind of beyond or beside the point. Like we don't need hardware if there's no drawers and I don't want it to look like there was drawers. So I am gonna fill the holes and I actually am gonna be using a new product to me. It is called Bondo still, but it's a glazing and spot putty. So that basically means that you 
it's not a two-part epoxy. There's no mixing of products. It isn't quite as like strong per se as like Bondo might be. I've never tried it with the hardware holes. So we'll see if it works okay with that and if it shrinks or anything. Um, but my favorite part is that it doesn't smell as bad and also that you don't have to mix it because mixing the Bondo sometimes it just hardens way too quickly. So I'm gonna put some painter's tape back behind the holes so that it doesn't leak through. And then we're gonna fill them up. It'll probably take more than one application. So we're gonna let that dry and then in the meantime, I'm gonna be cutting some wood. And what my plan is, is to cover up these little indentations with some molding that I grabbed from the hardware store. So I'm gonna be using this miter box to actually cut the trim pieces that I got for these. And sometimes I like to use my miter saw, but sometimes with these smaller cuts, there's no reason to get the big saw out. So I'm just doing a hand saw and then this miter box, which allows me to do 45 degree angle cuts as well. So what I'm doing is measuring for this trim to fit onto here. So it's 16 and three quarters inch. So that is where I'm gonna be cutting it at this 45 degree angle. Okay, so now I basically need to do one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more of those. And then we'll also do the sides too. Everything has been cut for the framing out of the areas on the front of the chest, but I did go ahead and sand down the Bondo and I did need to do one more coat. So while that's drying on there, I don't wanna put the frame on there because then it'll be difficult to sand this without possibly bumping it. Long story short, I'm moving on to the legs while that's drying. Now I noticed that the bottom is pretty thin and with the legs that I am putting on, that it has quite a long screw here to get them on. So I don't want to push, put a hole through the bottom here so that you can see it inside. So my idea is to attach some blocks so that the leg can basically go into here and we'll attach the block into the bottom of the chest. You'll be able to see them, but I've got a way, an idea that I'm gonna be able to cover them so that it won't be as noticeable. And this way we won't be poking a hole through the bottom here. So my first step is to go ahead and drill a hole for the bracket, the bracket that is going to be holding the leg. So now I'm basically checking to see if my leg is going to be able to slide into the hole that I just created and be flush against the bottom here, which it looks like it is. And the trick with this type of leg that's angled out is to get the bracket in just the right spot because if I put the bracket on the wrong way, the leg could end up shooting downward like this or inward like this. So it's important that I make sure to put the bracket on correctly. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that if you have angled legs. This will work for any project that you're installing the angled legs. So I've got my leg on the bracket already, but I can't leave it on there to attach it because I need to screw the bracket into the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and then I'm going to just mark any one of the holes that I'm gonna be screwing or that, I'm gonna, that is going to be screwed in here. This is going to allow me to know exactly where the spot that is marked should go on the bottom here. So 
I am going to just mark it up pretty good. That way I for sure get at least some type of marking from my Sharpie. Then I'm gonna angle out my leg exactly how I want it in the end result, which is outward. And then I'm going to put it in the hole and then I'm gonna push pretty hard in order to get that Sharpie to rub off onto the base. Sometimes it might not work the first time. Over there, I had to do it several times. So just be patient. I promise it will work as long as you get enough ink and it will rub off onto the wood here. Try this again. Kind of twist a little bit as well. Not too much though. So now we've got our Sharpie mark right there, which means I can go ahead and line up this Sharpie mark that I created on the edge too. Don't forget to create the mark on the edge as well. And I'm gonna line that directly up with the mark over there. So now we gotta screw this in. Now I'm going to actually attach this to the base here exactly lined up with the hole that I created and I'm going to be using my brad nailer to do so and it's got one inch nails so I know that the one inch won't go through this and the bottom here so I'm not worried about it popping through I probably wouldn't want to do any any longer than that and then I'm going to screw these in these screws are longer than this board is thick, so it will go through the bottom a little bit more, which is just fine. It's not gonna go all the way through because of the length of them, but it will also ensure just a little bit more structure and like security um, with those screws in there. Ta -da! So it's angled out, which is absolutely perfect. And I got that one done already, so I'll put that leg in, and now we've just got two left. Oh no, a little more than two. Wait, oh, oh okay, yeah. Three, two and three quarters. Why do I keep doing that to myself? Freaking my boat out. Two, three quarters. Woo, woo, woo. All right. I get excited, you guys. These projects are so fun, and I love a little bit of a challenge as well. Sometimes it's nice to have easy flips, but sometimes it's also nice to have some ch more challenging flips that really work your brain. And that's what this one's doing. We can see these boards down under here. Not very appealing. So I've got this extra pine lattice that I had for another project. And so my idea is to cut it to size and basically attach it to those boards under there, which will cover them, them and then We'll paint this the same color that I'm gonna be painting up here. It's supposed to look like it's always meant to be there. So that's the goal. Um, but I'm gonna get this sanded down so that we can also attach the um, framing out here that I have cut. And that way we can finally get to painting. I'm gonna be attaching the framing with the wood glue and my brad nailer just to ensure that we've got a great attachment going on so that nothing's gonna be popping off so first wood glue I'm just gonna do a tad bit around the edges here and we got a 5 8 inch nail in here I'm not gonna do too many because I don't I mean the wood glue will really hold it in there Alright, 
the framing is on, I'm just gonna wipe up this last bit of glue here. Then we'll need to let this glue dry for a little bit. In the meantime, I will also go ahead and fill these little holes I made with the brad nailer with some wood filler. That way, once everything's dry, we can prime. All right, let's attach this front piece here. I already cut it to size and I did miter the edges that way the corners will be nice and perfect. Again, the goal is that we're making this piece look like it always was attached. So I'm just gonna, again, use my brad nailer to attach it and I'm just attaching it into these same cedar um, blocks that I put the legs into and then I'll fill the holes and paint over it. prime and I'm just getting all this leftover dust off of the surface here from you know screwing different things in to sanding down that wood filler I don't want any leftover dust clogging up my primer or leaving any chunks so I'm just take I have a damp cloth here and just going over the surface one last time then I'm gonna be using Lily Moon's primer and it is a stain blocking primer. The name of it is Eclipse. And since I'm going with a lighter color on this for the main color, I decided that I'm gonna be using white Eclipse just to kind of give it that base layer. But then also I sort of went down past this wood, um, the finish of this wood here. So I definitely wanna block those stains in, especially this is a cedar chest. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of the wood is cedar, but I can see some sort of reddish tones and we definitely don't want that popping through my lighter color paint. And then, you know, down here with the pine as well, we don't want that to bleed through since it is just completely raw wood. So that is why I'm using that stain blocking primer. And I'm just gonna be using a zebra brush to get going. That's gonna dry. I 
don't think I'm gonna do a second coat, but I might. It really just depends on like once it's dried up, um, if I see anything popping through because it's really bad bleeder, um, then I will do some of another coat, but otherwise we'll be ready to paint once this dries. All right, I am going to move on to the top here because after the primer dried, the holes for the hardware that I filled in were still sinking down just a tad bit. So I whipped out my regular Bondo. Like I said, I was just doing a test with that glazing spotting putty. It works great for other smaller, less deep gouges. So I'm gonna stick with the Bondo for actual hardware holes since that's like such a deep hole. So we'll let that dry and we'll come back and sand that. But in the meantime, I am going to work on the top. And for the top, I went ahead and disconnected it from the base because I'm gonna be doing a white wash. So the color I'm gonna be using for the base um, body of the chest is this color called Ivory Coast by Lily Moon Paint. And it is the opulent formula, which means it's all built in, no primer needed, unless you're doing it for covering up stains and bleed through, and then also no top coat needed. I will probably still do a top coat on the top since on the top here, I'm gonna be doing a whitewash, but I wanted to use the same color so that it all contrasts together. I just thought that this part was too orangey, and then plus the trim part here doesn't really match. It's not the same tone of wood. So with a whitewash or a paint wash, all you do is you need a separate container. I really enjoy just using old cottage cheese containers, sour cream containers, reusing what I've got around the house instead of buying new ones because honestly, they're just going to get thrown away anyway, so why not reuse them? Then what you need to do is take a little bit of the paint here, and it depends on how thick you want your wash to be. I typically do about 50-50. So I'm just gonna pour a tad bit in here. I don't need a ton because this top here isn't very big at all. And also I don't really do measurements. I just kind of estimate and then it all pretty much turns out okay with the white washes. And then I will also add some water to the paint. And I'll stir it around and it'll become this very liquidy paint wash. Very, very liquidy. It doesn't even hold on to the stick very much. Then what I do is take my paintbrush or you can apply it with a rag. Depends on whatever you wanna do. I find it easier to apply it with a brush and then t wipe it back with a rag. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, once it's applied to the whole thing, I'm gonna take my lint-free cloth and wipe it back. You can kind of let it stay on for however long you want to, depending on how potent you want your whitewash to be. You want it to soak into the wood a bit more, then leave it on just a little bit longer. I'm thinking I would like to go a bit darker, so I'm gonna apply it a bit thicker here and not wipe off as much. Okay, so now I'm going to let this dry. Set that aside. Now I believe the Bondo is dry and ready to be sanded down so that we can get to painting. So since when I sanded down that Bondo, we exposed the wood again, I'm gonna do another coat of the primer. And since I've got it out, I might as well just do it on the entire chest. That way we get a little bit more coverage and we don't have to maybe use as much of the actual color of paint if we just did one coat of primer. Let the primer dry for about an hour so we're all in the clear, it's dry. So I'm gonna be painting on with the Ivory Coast, which is the same color that I did the wash on the top of the chest, but this is going to be like 
full on paint, not a paint wash. So we're going, it's going to be a bit of an off white color and I'm excited to try it out because I'm loving this neutral tone that it's giving off. Oh, that is so pretty. Mm -hmm. With this paint, you guys, you do not need a lot. The coverage is impeccable. It is so, such like thick paint, but like not in a bad way, if that makes any sense. It just has really great coverage, even with this light color. Like I'm gonna do two coats, but technically I don't even think I would need two coats because that's how great this coverage is from the white to the kind of off-white ivory color here. I honestly just dip it barely in the top here, wipe a little bit off, and I can basically paint this whole entire section. Okay, first coat on that is finished and I absolutely love it. I think that this is going to go super well with these legs that I've got going on down here. We'll do one more coat once it dries and then we'll put everything back together. Ready for coat number two. This is all completely dry. So we're gonna get full coverage with the second coat. Second coat is on and it is drying, but it's always a good idea to take the tape off while your paint is still a bit wet. That way it doesn't pull any off with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape here off from the edge. And now we let it dry. It's time to put the top on. All I've gotta do is screw it back into the hinges and then we've got a done piece of furniture. I can't wait to see what this looks like on top because the rest of it looks really good. And so this will just be that finishing touch. And voila. At first, I didn't think that this specific chest still had that locking mechanism on it, but I later found out that it does. And so we need to remove that since sometimes these lane cedar chest locking mechanisms can sort of malfunction. And although this probably isn't something that a kid would go in, it's really important that I go ahead and remove it so that way I can sell it legally. Um, so I'm just going to remove this little clasp right here and then we should be good to go. All right, so I went ahead and removed just that little locking part that slips into this locking mechanism. I don't know the proper names for all of it, but I would like to put this silver plate back on. That way this um, more ugly kind of plywood looking stuff isn't showing. So I'm just gonna pry that back and then we'll put these screws back in. And there we go, no more locking. I am so happy with the results of this Lane Cedar chest. My ideas and my vision is exactly the way that it turned out. I said it earlier in the video, but I am really finding that I enjoy these challenging furniture projects. Lately, I feel like I haven't been just doing the run of the mill, put some paint on a piece of furniture um, and call it good. I've been trying to challenge myself and see where my skills set is and I honestly challenge you guys to do the same thing now if you're a beginner totally okay you know I've been doing this for two years now so maybe don't challenge yourself quite as much just yet but if you are a seasoned furniture flipper 
or you want to start challenging yourself more in how, what you can create, then I challenge you to do something new that you've never tried before. Think outside of the box, grab ideas off of Instagram and Pinterest and see if your ideas, if you can make them come to life. I got this piece for $35 and all of the material costs, including the legs and the trim molding here and the paint cost me around $45. So 45 plus 35, we're in around 80 bucks. So not too bad for a Lane Cedar chest, I would say. I'm really lucky that I found it so cheap to begin with. So I'm gonna list it over on Facebook Marketplace around the 225 mark, I'm pretty sure sure I, it's kind of a game time decision so I might up it a little bit once I actually post it on there but $80 and 225 on there so we'll get a pretty nice profit after this baby sells and speaking of materials I just want to remind you guys that all of the links are going to be listed down below in the description of not only this video but every single video I love to share my products with you guys that I use on my flips so it's easy access down there also I want you to know that clicking on <laughs> I also want you to know that clicking on those links in the description and buying these products that I am recommending you guys, it really helps us out. It helps support this channel. It helps us continue to bring free content to you guys every single week. Not only does it help our small business, but it also helps out small businesses such as Lily Moon Paint, which is all of the products that I used on this flip. So again, you can use my code FFT10 for 10% off. I love getting you guys discounts because not only are you just supporting me every step of the way, you guys also deserve the discounts as well. I just love when these furniture flipping videos come full circle so that way you guys can really see the potential profit that can be made while flipping furniture. I listed this piece on Facebook Marketplace for $225 just last night and not even two hours later I had a couple of inquiries and then I had a deposit of $100 in my Venmo account so that I could hold it so they could pick it up today. So we got full price offer um, of $225 thus giving us a total profit of $145. So they're on their way to pick it up now. I will say that Neiman and my parents both told me to list it a bit higher than the 225. They even said like 325. I will not lie, I still struggle with pricing. And since I had like a few inquiries very quickly, that sort of tells me that I probably should have listed it a little bit higher. Continue to remember that not only does the piece matter, such as this being a lane cedar chest, so those are pretty desirable, but not only that, this is a one of a kind lane cedar chest now that I have put my little spin on it. So nobody else is gonna have this. If people want this and they're going to have to pay for the one of a kind original piece of furniture. So just continue to learn and you can learn right along with me. Don't feel discouraged, but just remember next time, I'll remember next time if I have a lane cedar chest that I've put my spin on that, you know, this one sold pretty quickly. So maybe the next one I can list just a tad bit higher. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.